to go off script and say, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, thank you. Thank you for your work. Thank you for your voice and how you use it. And thank you for being an extraordinary example for all of us, especially in these times. Yes, even the stars know we need our moment of Maxine, especially in times like these. And joining me now to discuss the unbelievable week that was in Trump land is Congresswoman Maxine Waters. First of all, congratulations on that shout out. And second of all, happy Mother's Day. And a happy Mother's Day to you, and thank you so very much. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's get right to it, uh, Congresswoman. Um, you <coughs> have been yes. uh, consistently um, a voice uh, demanding to know what the Trump relationship is with Russia. We finally got Donald Trump to directly address that verbally this week. I want to play you a little bit of his interview with our own Lester Holt, in which he okay. denies his connections to Russia. Take a listen. I have no investments in Russia. None whatsoever. Uh, I don't have property in Russia. A lot of people thought I owned office buildings in Moscow. I don't have property in Russia. I am not involved in Russia. No loans, uh, no nothing. And Congresswoman, in order to back that up, Donald Trump sent a certified letter from his law firm, which I think was law firm of the year uh, in, among, according to the Russian government for a while, uh, attesting that he had no investments in, in Russia. It, how can Congress verify that um, short of subpoenaing his tax returns? Well, I'm not so sure it's about his investments uh, in Russia. First of all, if he has no connection, not involved in collusion, he ought to cooperate with the investigation. He ought not to simply keep saying, why are you doing this? This is a witch hunt. The fact of the matter is there's enough going on to have many of us believe uh, that there is a connection, there is some involvement, and that his campaign and some of his campaign operatives and allies have been involved in collusion. And so he should stop simply saying, I have no connection. Cooperate with the investigation. Let's get to the bottom of it and let's find out whether or not there was collusion. Because if there has been collusion, undermining our democracy, undermining our election system, I maintain that he ought to be impeached. If it's not, then let's clear it up. Uh, let's get to to the bottom of it all. Let's see if the dots connect. Uh, and I think he should just stop saying it and say, let's get to it, let's investigate, and I will do everything that I can uh, to help with this investigation. Well, and I want to come back to impeachment, because I think it's, it is an important uh, question as to why this is not, does not yes. seem to be on the table. But I want to put up the list of people. Um, you have called them the Kremlin clan uh, on your Twitter feed. But yes. it, it is a lot of yes. people that have direct ties in some way to uh, Russia. Jeff Sessions, uh, who did not tell the truth about meeting with Ambassador Kislyak. You have, of course, Roger Stone, Carter Page, Manafort, Kushner, uh, and Tillerson. Um, and, and yet Yet, despite all of that circumstantial evidence, that there's at least some connection or some really huge coincidences here, why do you suppose that having impeached Bill Clinton for lying about a sexual affair, that the same body, the House of Representatives, does not seem to have any interest in even, you know, considering impeachment uh, for this president? Well, I think that the Congress of the United States ought to be ashamed of the fact that we have not been able to move forward with this investigation. I think the actions of Mr. Nunes uh, with the House Intelligence Committee is shameful. Uh, I also had more confidence for a while uh, that the Senate Intelligence Committee was going to do better, but they have not hired the staff. Of course, the Republicans are in charge. Uh, the Democrats are not able uh, to basically lead uh, these committees and have the power uh, to do what some of us would like to have done. I just think the Republicans had better be aware uh, that if these dots are connected and they have stood with this president for this long, no matter his lies, no matter his deceptions, no matter in ways that he's tried to distract us, they're going to pay a price for it. They claim to be patriotic. Well, I tell you, patriotism means that you're going to defend this democracy, that you're 
you're not going to allow this president to wrap his arms around Putin and the Kremlin and be in collusion with them uh, because you love this country more. You care about America and you care about the democracy. I believe that the Republicans had better be aware and that they'd better know that people are watching and no matter the support that he seems to have now, they'd better step up to the plate because in the final analysis, they're not going to be able to say to their constituents why they allowed it to continue to go this far without aligning themselves with our democracy and supporting it. And very quickly, I want to play for you Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, uh, who seemed to at least move in the direction of at least part of the administration accepting that Russia was behind the attack on our election. This is Rex Tillerson on Meet the Press this morning. Well, Chuck, I think we have such a broad range of important issues that have to be addressed in the U.S. in the U.S.-Russia relationship. Obviously, the interference in the election is one of those. I think it's been well documented. It's pretty well understood uh, the nature of that interference uh, here and elsewhere. And if the Secretary of State, who is a friend uh, of Vladimir Putin's, is admitting that Russia interfered in the election, what do you suppose it would stop Donald Trump from admitting the same? Well. Well, let me just say this. For Tillerson, what he just said is well known by everybody. Our intelligence agencies have documented that they interfered in the election. So that's no new information. I'm watching Rex Tillerson also. Don't forget, he is the one who negotiated the multi-billion dollar deal with Putin to drill in the Arctic. And all that Putin wants is this president and all of this cabinet to support the fact that he wants these sanctions lifted. And that's what this is all about, lifting the sanctions so that Putin can draw, uh, drill oil in the Arctic and have trillions of dollars benefiting him and uh, all that he wants to do to continue to expand uh, into the Ukraine and other areas of the old Soviet Union. Yeah. So uh, I, wanna know, I want uh, to watch Tillerson. I want to know whether or not Tillerson is simply saying what sounds like the right things or whether or not he's on it because Exxon wants these sanctions lifted also. Yeah, well, we will definitely he be was following. the CEO of Exxon. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We will definitely be watching and following the money. And we always appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk with you. Congressman Maxine Waters, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank you. And if you want to follow the Congresswoman on Twitter, which you most of you already are, you can check her out at Maxine Waters. And coming up, Melissa McCarthy makes her triumphant return to Saturday Night Live. Now, I'm filling in for Sean today. As you know, Sean is fulfilling his duty as an officer in the Naval Reserve, and that is why he cannot be here. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I can see him hiding in those bushes. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.